Lying is a betrayal. The one who you consider to be weak, I consider to be strong. But I will make sure that that person is given their right which is due to them. And the one who you consider to be strong is weak. But I will make sure that they give their rights to those who, whose rights are owed. When people abandon the struggle for Allah's sake, Allah will abase them. And when gross wrongdoings, when gross wrongdoings become prevalent in a society, Allah will cause misfortune to befall them. Obey me as long as I obey Allah and His Messenger. If I disobey, if I disobey Allah and His Messenger, do not obey me. Very short, but very poignant, very powerful. There's many lessons we can learn from these words here in the Prophet of Sadiq. Firstly, that he didn't seek leadership. He said, I was put in place. I didn't want this position. This is a very important principle in Islam. We don't seek to be president, we seek to be leader. If Allah puts you in that position, it's a responsibility that you take. And then you hope for Allah's assistance with it. Abu Bakr was, was forced into that position. It was thrust upon him without him his desiring it. Secondly, the humility that you had, okay, which we don't see in many leaders around us. A tawadr. I'm not, I've been put in this position, and I'm not the best of you. There's better people there. That's what he was saying. And the concern is truth and for sincerity. A sinful aman. It's a trust. Telling the truth is a trust. You'll be after that. Yawmah and Ta'asadat in a sinful form, Allah says. The day in which the truthful will be will be benefited by their truthfulness. When Kedal Khiyam, lying, dishonesty is a, is a betrayal of that trust. And we see his support for the weak and the oppressed. He would, he would take the side of the weak to make them strong. And take some of the power out of the, out of the, powers, out of the hands of the, of the strong to level things up. And then he said, finally, there's no, there's no obedience to the creation in it, if, it, if, it, if it constitutes disobedience to the Creator. SubhanAllah. <laughs> These are his opening words. And we did obviously we look back at that golden age and we look at the time we live in, we see the difference. But we, as Muslims we live in the, in the present, not in the past. We have to deal with the issues which we live in today, which we confront today. And we need to engage with society at every level. Because we have so much to give. We have so much to contribute to the society as Muslims, with the light of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So when it comes to elections next week, we have a duty to engage as Muslims. And some Muslims think it's not even permissible to vote, which is nonsense. But most, many more think that it's not, any, there's no benefit in it. What's the point in taking part in that system? My vote, what, what, what does my vote matter? And others go to the other extreme and say we have to engage, all our energy should be in this political engagement. We, this, that, that's the way we're going to change things. And the reality is somewhere in between. So, voting, is one of, voting is one of many ways to engage. And it's your democratic right to vote. So you can exercise it in many places where people can't vote. People have nothing to vote for. So thank Allah for that, for that liberty. And voting gives you the power to preserve your rights to practice your faith. So you should use your vote to making sure that you can practice your faith in this country. Live in a, in a state of, 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 of uh, tranquility, of, of safety. It gives you the opportunity to hold your political representatives accountable. And it gives us to express some of what we feel about the suffering of the Ummah. People that are suffering in, in Palestine, Kashmir, and China. But through political means, perhaps something can be done for these people. We don't, we don't. I think that's the only way, but we realize that there's, there's a potential for that. So my advice would be to do, do your research. Look at the issues that really matter to you. Not just as a Muslim, not just for your family, not just for your community, but for the whole of, whole of society. Muslim, non-Muslim. And look at the weak in society. That's what Sayyidina Dr. Salah mentioned. Look at the weak in society. Muslim and non-Muslim. And ask, if there, are their needs being taken care of? Whether it be housing, how many people do you see sleeping on the streets? Whether it be employment, whether it be health, all these things we need to think about. And how they said all that, we recognize it's limited. Okay, so, so
So folks, it's very, it's very limited in scope. 